we'll begin this review with the terms hypothetical conditions and jurisdictional exceptions, two more assignment conditions which must be disclosed if they exist. A hypothetical condition is a condition which does not really exist at the time of the appraisal, but which is assumed to exist for purposes of the assignment. For instance, an appraiser might be asked to appraise a damaged painting, assuming that it's been restored to perfect condition. Maybe the owner is trying to determine if it's worth the expense to have the item restored. In this example, the painting being in perfect condition is the hypothetical condition. Why? Because that condition does not, in fact, exist at the time of the appraisal. Indeed, the painting has a hole in it. But the appraiser is being asked to appraise the painting, assuming that it's been restored to excellent condition. Hypothetical conditions must be disclosed in the report along with the statement that the use of the hypothetical condition might have affected the assignment results. By the way, a hypothetical condition will result in what is referred to as a hypothetical appraisal. A jurisdictional exception is yet another assignment condition. It's a condition which affects the real property appraiser mostly, but rarely impacts the personal property appraiser. It derives from applicable laws and regulations which preclude the appraiser from complying with a part of USPAP. If any section of USPAP is contrary to applicable case law or ordinances, then the appraiser is excused from complying with that section of USPAP. Jurisdictional exceptions serve to preserve the balance of USPAP if one or more of its parts is in conflict with local laws or ordinances. Jurisdictional exceptions must be disclosed in the report. The objective of an assignment varies depending on whether the assignment is an appraisal, appraisal review, or appraisal consulting. The objective of an appraisal is monetary in nature and is what the appraiser is being asked to determine. For instance, the objective of an appraisal might be to determine fair market value for an item being donated, or the objective of the appraisal might be to estimate a replacement cost for a property lost in a fire. The objective of an appraisal review would be to form an opinion about the quality of another appraiser's work. The objective of an appraisal consulting assignment is to develop a recommendation or opinion to solve a problem. Appraisal consulting, by the way, applies only to real property appraisers and not to personal property appraisers. An opinion of value, developed either by the consulting appraiser or by another, is involved with but is not the primary focus of an appraisal consulting assignment. A market is a place where goods trade hands, typically in exchange for money. To arrive at a value conclusion, the appraiser must research a particular market, known as the most appropriate market, to locate market data for comparable properties in order to support a value conclusion. The choice of which market to research hinges on the intended use of the report, which directs the appraiser's choice of value type and definition, and in turn, which market to explore. For instance, for the intended use of acquiring insurance, the appraiser may be required to determine replacement value. This requirement directs the appraiser to explore the retail market in which the insured customarily shops in order to locate relevant market data. When selecting a market to research, appraisers must be careful to make use of the appropriate level of trade. Level of trade refers to our merchandising structure in which different trading levels result in different price points. There are four such levels of trade. Which of the four levels of trade the appraiser researches will depend on the intended use of the appraisal. The appraiser might use the retail market, the wholesale market, the orderly liquidation market, or the forced liquidation market. But each level of trade has different examples known as market levels, each of which differ in characteristics and often in price. In the retail market, for example, replacement values for a sterling silver flatware service can be found at a posh department store, at a local jewelry store, or at an online replacement service. These are all examples of market levels in the retail marketplace. Primary and secondary markets are terms relating to the retail market, that is, the market in which sales are made to the end consumer. Items still being manufactured have a primary market, 
such as a Craftsman lawnmower being sold for the first time at Sears. But they could also have a secondary market, such as the same lawnmower in used condition that is resold to a subsequent owner at a yard sale. But items no longer being produced, such as an antique clock, have only one type of retail market, and that is a primary market. There is no secondary market for items no longer being produced. All available markets for such items are primary markets. Examples of primary markets for an antique clock would include antique stores, estate sales, consignment shops, and auctions.